So after a year off, it was the British National TT Championships this year. Obviously, 2020 did not happen. Uh, and I thought, why not go through some power data? Because it's a very interesting thing, the British National Championships, because not that many World Tour pros are there, but there are a lot of good uh, Conti boys and amateur people who have outrageous CDA numbers. And it's really interesting to see how much like big watts doesn't matter if you're not aero. And we're going to go through the under 23s as well, because I'd say they're the biggest culprit of having outrageous watts, but not super, super aero. So anyway, you can see Ethan Hayter won. He didn't post power, obviously. Big hitter. He does some outrageous power and is super, super aero. He obviously won by 37 seconds, which is a pretty big margin. Then Dan Big and James Shaw, both super aero. Fred Wright, John Archibald, Connor Swift, and then you know, I guess these are all the basically the Conti, um, Conti boys after this. But we're going to go through some numbers. So it was actually quite good, this circuit. Uh, it was like three laps for the elite men and two for the under-23 men. Um, and I also believe it was the same with the women. So anyway, we're going to go into this. So you can see straight away that if we look at like Ethan Hayter, so Dan Bigham did 360, James Shaw 350, Archibald 380. So you can see already that like there's no correlation between power numbers and speed. And you could say that they weigh different weights, and that is true because it is slightly hilly, but obviously the main determinant of speed in a time trial is what's per CDA. CDA obviously being how, um, like what your drag coefficient is, um, times by your area. So Charlie Corman again, like 407 watts, he's a big boy, but even so you can see there's not much correlation here. And obviously Max Stemmen is an outlier because he's at 52 kilos, but even so, his CDA is mad. So we're gonna look at Dan Bigham's power numbers first. Um, so overall it was 370 normalized for 57 minutes, which is a very strong ride. It's not like ridiculous though. Like if you just said to a World Tour Pro, like in your TT position, can you do 370 watts for an hour? A lot of them could say yes, but the difference is Dan Bigham's CDA, he said was like 0.17, which if you didn't know, is some of the lowest CDAs you can actually get. So outrageous performance in terms of speed, but not in terms of like pure physiology. Like if you just looked at the numbers, you'd be like, yeah, he's probably not gonna come second, but he did because he's really error. And we, and I think obviously on the climbs, it's not that important. If you look at the climbs, he did a very good climb here, right? Uh, up this one, 6%, 440 watts. But the time that you really get to see it is on like these downhill parts. So he's going 52K an hour on 350 watts. And then you can look at other people. Um, so this is James Shaw, right? Actually, we don't wanna look at him. Hannibal. So this is my friend, um, my mate's mate, Ollie Knight, who is outrageously strong. You can see here, 6.2 watts per kilo for 40 minutes. Ridiculous. This is the under 23, so it's slightly um, smaller, but it was on the same day. And you can see here, he's doing 373 watts and going 47 kilometers an hour. And that is the difference. You think 20 watts more and 4K an hour slower. And that really illustrates, to me at least, the importance, obviously, of being aero, but just like how big it is. Someone's doing 20 watts more, weighs less than him. So you think, if anything, should be slightly more aero, but not. Dan Bigham, just so aero that he can make up, like he's literally doing 50 watts less, um, which is just crazy. So again, if, you, if we look on the climb on this part um, here, he was doing 433 watts, um, 26K an hour. So you can see Dan Bigham also on his pacing strategy um, was also interesting as well because he actually chose to go a lot harder, 440 watts relative to his threshold. He went a lot harder on the climb than Oli Knight. Again, in suggesting that pacing is very important because look here, 26K an hour up this 6% climb and he went 27 and a half and did six watts per kilo. Oli Knight did seven watts per kilo. And you might say, okay, yeah, you know, maybe it's power meters over reading. I don't think it is. I think it's just the fact that it's how it is error is still on this climb. Like obviously not all of it, but at the same time, they're going 46K an hour at some point up this. So yeah. That is the point, is that aero is really, really important and Dan Bigham is super aero. But we can also look at James Shaw as well because James Shaw, like, again, five and a half watts per kilo, 360 watts. So actually, if we compare it to Dan Bigham here, numbers wise, not actually too dissimilar, like 370 normalized versus 363, it's 10 watts in it, but he weighs significantly less and he's doing five and a half watts per kilo. Again, his CDA is really, really good, uh, but still, like, Dan Bigham is not, um, is still just a lot more aero. But even then, you think compare James Shaw to Ollie Knight. If Ollie Knight, and I'm not picking on anyone, I just happen to know him, and or not really know him, but know like his numbers and stuff. I knew that he had an outrageous ride, like power-wise. Um, and it's just more the fact that you know that if like this guy Ollie Knight went to Ribble 
and focused really on his TTs like James Shaw has. James Shaw wasn't an outrageous TT rider, but then he really focused on it and is now super, super good. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the moral of the story is that Watts is actually not that important um, in reality in comparison to uh, pure weight. We can also go have a look at the women as well. Um, not Anna Henderson won, won it with 260 watts. And again, this also shows you how important error is because let's be honest, like 260 watts is not absolutely outrageous number if you're like a world tour, um, like if you're a like an average bloke, let's say, like 260 watts probably isn't, but you're not gonna be going as fast um, as Anna Henderson. So then you're like, again, CDA is really important. Like she's 58 kilos and does 270 watts, which obviously is, it's pretty bonkers numbers um, for a woman like 4.6 watts per kilo. But like, if you said to me, okay, if I do 4.6 watts per kilo, would I go 42K an hour? No way. And I'm not that much heavier than her, like maybe a kilo or two at the moment. And like in TC is probably at two or three kilos, but I'm still no way I'm going as quick. And like, I guess that's the point. Again, we can do the classic segment, this part here, um, 260 watts, 46K an hour. Again, that's really aero. Like again, if we compare to like, obviously they are a slightly different size. Um, but this one here again, 47k an hour, 370 watts. And you may argue that the wind's slightly different. It was on the same day, slightly different time. I don't know how different the wind is, but like 2k an hour slower, but on 110 watts less. I mean, that's that's pretty mad, isn't it? Really, um, if we look at obviously this, the climbing speed is where you can't really get around it on CDA as much. Like five watts per kilo, she's going still 27k an hour is pretty pretty solid, but I think um, it's this segment we're actually looking at, which is 23k an hour. So you can see it's like 4k an hour slower there, but then on the fast section, only 2k an hour slower and doing a lot less watts. So that again shows you that the CDA is really important for everyone and that even like, yeah, it's just mad. Like it's just crazy um, because there's nothing else in cycling like it. You, climbing, you know, you can optimize certain stuff, but at the end of the day is what's per kilo. Well, time trial is what's per CDA, but it, like the CDA part of the equation is so much easier to change than the kilos part. Like if you think about it, there's no way that on the what the watts part is also impossibly hard. So if you keep that constant, the CDA thing is like the easiest to change by far, mainly because you can just like literally shrug your neck sometimes and it gives you like 10 watts. It's just bonkers like how some small changes uh, can change it so much, uh, which is why I guess it's such a weird discipline and it's quite different to the rest of cycling just because it is really like you know how hard you actually work on your time trial position and your equipment um and it's a lot more important because you can see here again with the women's like people are doing different power and stuff but this slightly like, trends better but she's doing 208 watts and there's like you know a fair way down like four minutes down so again it just shows you you've got to be super aero and that i also think potentially that with like the world tour it's getting to the point where some teams can't compete like if you look at who wins tts it's like quick step yumbo visma ineos and no one really is that good apart from them. UAE, obviously, Tade is very, very good, but you know, there's not, like UAE, like Total Direct Energy, okay, they're not World Tour, but like teams like that, they're just not gonna compete. That's just the way it is because they just don't have the equipment needed now, um, which I think is is pretty uh, pretty interesting stuff. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this small little breakdown of the UK TT uh, Nationals. It was very interesting and um, good to see some uh, Conti boys and uh, doing well. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.